Okay, I'm back. Hello. So yeah, once again, it's been a while since I have done this. I have been kind of busy this past few weeks. That's why there wasn't any new video being uploaded. So you guys remember the last Vincent video I did, I didn't get to finish the new match. So you can think of this video, this short video as like a makeup video for that lah, because in this video we'll just be fighting one new and that's it. I'm also considering to probably space out the matches by a bit. That means like one video, one match or one video, two match at most. But mostly it's like one one video, one match lah. That way I can like put out more videos in total. And then you guys don't need to sit through like two hours of two hours worth of matches. Yeah, let, let's try that, let's try that. I'll I'll try that and see how it works out. Okay, anyway, uh this once again is the deck I'm using. Uh, you can call it Turtle Burst <laughs> Turtle Burst Vincent. Now why why I call it Black Line, right? Because I I like to play as in when I'm playing Magic the Gathering I like play mono black. So the reason why I went to like went out to find like shadow blades like why I like sort of gravitated to shadow blades in Flesh and Blood is I was trying to find when I picked up Flesh and Blood right, I was trying to find something which played the closest to mono black. And at time Chain had Living Legend, he LL in class constructed, so I saw what he did like, it's kinda of powerful, but it's not option because they he already like CC in Classic Construction. Classic construction. Classic constructed at that time. So Vincent wasn't really stand up. Then what well, what well, that time what was I left with? There was a out that time I think it was Outsiders that was released. We haven't even seen Dust New Dawn yet. So what 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 did I leave me with? Leviathan. So I bought Leviathan with this deck and then yeah that didn't work out so well. I tried playing Leviathan and Talisha and then I got trashed. <laughs> so and apparently during that hurt like during Dust to Dawn there'll be a new Shadow Room Blade, which may or may not be chain. So I just bought the chain blade stack first, bought the room blade stuff first, and yeah, here I am with Vincent. So anyway, uh I'll be doing up a I'll be doing up like a more in-depth guide of sorts like, to this deck I'm like trying to make it. This step I'm trying to make work. I will do like a guide on it more, something more in depth soon. But okay, I, in summary, right? How did this deck come about? It's like I was playing the normal version of Insect. You just hit people with the double gate occasionally, and then try to block them out, and then swing back with a one card hand but I can still like swing for two plus six that sort of thing but you cannot you can never get over any fatigue strategy that Bravo is gonna block you out or block you for days and you just run out of cards or accumulate too much blood debt and die. So around that point of time right when I was a despairing of despairing over what to do with Bravo then I think who was it? Uh there was this Mr. Up guy on the Discord, you're saying like something about chaining deathly wheels together with moderate type. And I was like, okay, okay, that sounds like pretty interesting. But I didn't really consider it that then uh, because I wasn't experienced then like, I didn't see how multiple attacks can go over for team. I think who was it? Yes, uh Kevin or somebody. The 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 outline guy like, on YouTube, so he he went to Wolves or something and he went up against a Bravo, so he said he almost won that Bravo, he said that he almost won that Bravo and he took quite a lot of damage, then he finally managed to like chain a triple gate turn or like quadruple gate turn against the Bravo. So that's when like a, something like a spark like, went off in the head. Uh, the, the eyes are open, the mind like suddenly expand or whatever it, people are calling nowadays. So you can like use 
we can leverage the banish zone. We can use the banish zone as like a second hand. Just like stack all the cards in there and then use one or two key cards in your hand to multiply whatever is in your banish zone and just like spec the opponent for a lot. Of course you cannot do that against every hero because you try to do that against somebody like let's say dash io you were die la. you try to do against a dio or you were die haha <laughs> that's holy but apparently uh the people are runaways they are saying that you can actually try to otk zen i haven't man i didn't manage to try that out but if i can try that out i'll see how it goes la. oh that's that's Oh, uh, I've gone quite a bit off track already. So anyway, the Nu matchup. This is how I want to do We want to remove as many blues as possible from the deck. Because the safest place you can keep your blues when fighting Nu, right, is not in not your deck at all. The only blues that we are keeping here is the pumpkin. Because pumpkins can sometimes help us to create extra rune chance or we can use it to banish more action uh, and if and we accidentally banish this if this gets into banish we, it doesn't incur blood debt and the most new gets out of this is just a rune chance token and that's all definitely will is slightly more dangerous but you can use it to you can pitch it Put it at the bottom of your deck where you cannot get it, or you can play it. And when you play with your Shadow Knot deck, so you can set up a lot of like stuff like the with the rune chance which it returns. The two like the two quote unquote resources which Deathly Will generates is like two good opportunity to like not run the Deathly the blue Deathly Wills when you're fighting you. So this will be too clunky to play out at times and that is when Nu can use this against you so we don't play this uh, this if Nu plays this they can do they don't they can't do anything with this maybe just mess with your sink below and crowd providence but that's about it but also you play this against Nu you cannot do anything with it lah, so don't play it <laughs> that's quite simple Shadow also yeah Nu will be doing a lot of banishing from the top of your deck so you don't and from your combat chain so you don't really need to use shadow also to like supplement your banish zone so we can just like ball it out so in this place we just play some d reacts play all the d reacts this way we can uh we can quote unquote like block on our terms now we got more agency when blocking we decide what goes into our banish zone and what does not go into our banish zone so in this case right if our banish zone gets too full we die from blood there right and that's our fault it's my fault i put the cards there so this will this will help like faith or scene uh faith or scene reduce the rune chance sink below then you see no playing any non-stealth attacks and you see your banish zone a bit full already or you don't you see cards in your hand you don't want to banish you can just throw them in front of attacks which don't have stealth so they don't get banished. Okay, then I bought in three bounding demigons because compared to the rune gates, right, this is very easy to play. You just play one not the action, you play a funeral mood, you can play this already. You play one anything, you want a room blood incantation, moderate tide, shadow puff at three. Just about anything. So yeah, I guess so I guess this is this is it for now. I'll just like try to I'll just try to do a few more like videos with more matches against other heroes. So uh that's it from me off the matches. Oh yeah by the way, uh like share subscribe. It helps a lot you guys are the best. Okay, so let's do uh let's do a new let's do a new match. Mm. Where's my cyborg? So this can go anyway. This can either go well for me or poorly for me. This is the loadout for Nu. We just side out all the blues because 
as we all know it's one for the money two for the show three to get ready and no oh, no no the new took away all my blues right out of my hand as she transcends and plays them blues hmm. uh, what do I do here though if only I can get the bounding demigon like uh, let's just do the jack o' lantern we don't need to pay the life for this I don't want to let the new filter as well so we just draw an extra card maybe create a rune chant uh, let's uh, read the runes unfortunately so we didn't draw a card but we created a resource uh, if you might so we pass we arsenal the dash through the portal mm, this looks good i guess we can banish the deathly will and shadow puppetry deathly will into a uh... wait so this is assuming i want to block with equipment Surgical Extraction So maybe he wants to give it go again This doesn't have stealth I don't see a way to get the Bounding Demigod into my Banish at the same time the Deathly will I mean I can if I hold up for another stealth attack but If the Surgical Extraction hits What is definitely going to happen is that The is that the Shadow Puppetry is going to get out of my hand. I might want to remove the dash through the portal or I could just block with this and then yeah, I should block with this and cycle the dash through the portal but that might be a bit premature. Ugh. Let's not do that, let's not do that. Let's save the let's save the dash through the portal. If they want to do anything here, there is the reduce the rune chant. Because I can use the dash through the portal on the surgical I mean on the eloquent eulogy to try to swing for an extra rune chant. So you know this is coming already. We have to play the reduce to rune chant here, I guess. But then, if they have a transcend, then we can't play the shadow puppetry. In that case, we need the dash through the portal. But then we can't use the dash through the portal on the deathly will. So maybe. Oh, that's it. Okay, okay. I don't mind. Right, so we do this. Unfortunately, we cannot like we cannot pitch to the creepers. We are one turn too early for that. So we just shadow puppetry, pay the life. Let's see if our opponent wants to let the deathly will hit. Because against against Nu, right? You probably shouldn't stack blood them against them. You probably shouldn't stack cards in banish against them because they will do it for you like all of a sudden. Oh, they don't let it hit. Banish eloquent eulogy with shadow puppetry. Don't mind if I do. Yes. Uh now the thing is right. Because there's no creepers, I need to do this, 
Then I play this. Don't need to pay the life for this. I don't think he'll be doing any pitching. Now we put it on the eloquent eulogy, he gets go again, gives us an additional flail swing, which is probably gonna get blocked by the undertow stilettos. But I'd rather they block it now instead of later. That's one codex of frailty that we are that we don't have to deal with. Uh. But if he has multiple codex of frailty in his hand, then I will be punished for blocking the arsenal. Oh nice, you want to block like that. You shouldn't block like that because how we block this? Now we need to use a card to block this. Now imagine if for some like somehow there was a requiem or something that I could like just flash out that I could swing with the other eloquence with the other eloquent eulogy. Okay anyway, we just close the combat chain here, don't keep him waiting. Then we pass and we hand it over to him. Let's see what we get. Fortunately I don't see anything I can use my comma and conquer. Huh. Uh, I mean I don't need to block that, but the thing is right, I don't want to use the... Okay, that's more like it. We manage the top card of their deck, then look at their hand. Hey shit, this one, I got, I got quite a lot of blues, but they... Hmm. Oh, uh, thinking, thinking. Can I like not? That banish. Wherever I'm, wherever I'm planning. It's not going to... Okay, I tell what, I'll just block like this first. Let him go over. Then I use my sink below to sink something. Or maybe I could have done it a bit wrong. Yeah, I should block with the crown of providence and I try to flip the sink below so I can banish something relevant into the ban... Like get something relevant into the banish zone. Banish the top card of the deck. Look at the hand. That's two. Yeah, I should block the crown of providence. I I'm not gonna okay, I'm not gonna do anything here so you either will banish the dead through the portal or the sink below but it's a shame to lose the shadow puppetry but it could be in something better I think there's no choice, I need to waste the eloquence token here. Or I could creepers it in, but is it too early to use the creepers? That's the question. I could try to pray to Nasref for blues. Do I pray to Nasref for blues? That was not a blue. I mean, okay like I could have pitched and then like pitched to grasp like 3 plus 1 then shoot that out but yeah I probably should have done that lah. That's stupid of me. Oh and then he didn't use his command and conquer. Now I should have used the sink below. 
that was a mistake on my part. Okay, I can use the crown of providence to flip the thing. So I can swing back with a 5 card hand next turn. Yeah, if he's gonna do the if he's gonna do the command and conquer, he's not gonna do much. And then I have the I have this like requiem or something to try to do something with it. Lah. Like if I flip if the sink below turns into a if the sink below turns into a shadow not attack action, I should be able to do something with the tool with the eloquence requiem and read the runes. So yeah, let's see what happens here. Oh, that is not a shadow non attack action. That is unfortunate. But still. Yeah, we cannot like. We need to play the read the rooms. If you want to do some, if you want to like, use the, if you want to use the. Yeah, we need to play a read the rooms lah. Out of that eloquent theology. Here he needs to. Okay, there's a tuning resource. Yes, I need to clear my hand here. So I don't think I can play this out. I'll, I'll just like play this out then. So you close the combat chain, you get two rune chance out of this. Then we pass. There we arsenal the reduce to rune chant. If this was a if this was a shadow non attack, uh, we would have been eating good. What is this? Looking for a scrap. Sure, sure. You don't have let's use the extra things to block yeah let's use yeah let's use these to block Or maybe I use 
this to block. Yeah, correct. Let's use this to block. We block for a little extra. I'm afraid we need to let this hit. Because he only has one card to like swing. And I've got to banish this. Then we just send the Deathly Will as covering fire, I guess. We potentially get a rune chant out of this. And if we don't get a rune chant out of this, right? We still have the tuning resource to we still have the tuning resource to use to get one rune I mean to pay for the reduce the rune chant. No? He's trying to keep us off the creepers, but jokes on him, we've got nothing to use the creepers with at the moment. Okay, okay, so we are not getting rune chants out of that, but he's not getting a turn out of that. Oh, wait, I still get a rune chant. He took one damage, okay, he didn't block enough, I guess. Well, okay, I get to play my reduce for free. You gotta be shitting me, Isia. You've gotta be shitting me. In this case, what we do, right? We banish this. So, what the point? What's the point of having blues? We have blues. So we can do this. The third hardest place for Nu to target your blues is in the graveyard. The second hardest place for Nu to target your blues is at the bottom of your deck. The best way where Nu cannot target your blues is don't play them in your deck. For that he doesn't want to block at least definitely will is a four instead of three so he is we are likely to have one like rune chant out of it la. then we just pass then okay okay yeah we can do stuff with this hand he says as he realizes that we cannot do stuff with this hand wait come on I conquer is there anything I can block with Thinking, please bear with me. So we can consider the reduce to rune chant forfeit. But what I'm just thinking here is like, is there a way I can play out the deathly will next turn? I cannot because unfortunately this means that I cannot play the reduce to rune chant. Wait, uh wait, wait, uh in that case, right, maybe I should just In that case, right, maybe I should should just like do this and then do this. I won't be playing them anytime soon and if I want to keep up the offense against Nu, I need to attack next turn 
so I should dash through the portal on Daphne Delight into dash through the portal into Daphne Delight into the bounding demigod. to act so this way I don't this way I don't take six damage for nothing I lose a D react but it's on my own terms I mean this will be a bit hard the reduce to rune chance will be a bit hard to play because I end my turn with no rune chance at all but I still can use the tunic to do that and I'm gonna waste the eloquence token now, but there's a cost of doing business if I really want to, right, I can use the creepers now. But if they pitch, if they pitch, I use the creepers now and I try to get a rune chance for next turn. But if they pitch, if they block the two rune chance, that's it, I lose the creepers. So I'm not going to do that. Lah. So just stash through the portal, pay the life, just send a nice little double gate turn at them. And we save the tuning resource to play the reduce the rune chant the next turn. Play the FDD light first. Gotta get two life out of that. Then maybe next turn we can start letting their attacks hit. Because we can start letting their attacks hit like, because you want to banish some gas. Oh, their hand, their hand doesn't have that much blues. I mean, huh? Like, why not you? Why not you just pitch this one and then you? Okay lah, because I paid a because I paid a life. But still, you want to like use this to block something, right? Not pitch. I've no idea what's in their hand. Anyway, we just swing the bounding there we got. Or I could swing the flail. Try to get some like, try to get some rune chance for the next turn, but. Uh, let's swing the bounding demigon uh, just pile on the damage on him. Based on how he pitched and blocked. I still have no idea why he doesn't want to use this to block one of the four power attacks. Maybe he's not familiar with the matchup. We'll get two life out of this anyway. Hmm, nice. We can get ourselves some gas. Okay, so you guys want to see some action? If you want to see some action, gotta play the Jack O' Lanterns. I could even use the Spellbound Creepers to creep in the other jack o lantern but is it worth it or not? With the amount of gas in Banish, I think no, I shouldn't Creepers in the jack o lantern If I really want, I can use like Eloquent Eulogy and Funeral Moon or whatever fuck shit to like do something. No, we're not gonna pay life here. Oh, give me something good. Give me a red. Okay, that's good, that's good. But how how do I do this? I can swing with this, but then No 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 it, it's not gonna
I cannot widespread ruin into eloquent eulogy because I cannot pitch, I cannot create extra I cannot room gate This is the goal again, that's a problem But I can do this first, I can, do, I can start with the widespread ruin Maybe the widespread ruin finds me something good Maybe it finds me a requiem Then the problem will be solved Because I can just Play, yeah, the, the White Spirit Ruin needs to banish a Requiem Then I can play the Requiem Play the Funeral Moon Then I can go again into the Eloquent Eulogy But We've seen one Requiem la. Maybe the other two Requiems will be coming soon Maybe if I close the combat chain here, I get to banish a Requiem Or if I'm... Okay, the pass first. Or if I really, really want to, right? I can break the Grimoire of the Haunt here. Then get the Eloquence token, play the Funeral Moon, then swing with the... Swing with the Eloquent Eulogy. But that would be stupid. I need to close the combat chain here. Like, the fuck is... It's not going... Like, I can't get action points out of this. I mean, I can, I can, but... Okay, anyway, first, I don't want to IP myself, so I will play this. Then we don't pay the life. This way, we get our thing for free. We get our... We got our reduce for free. Okay, okay, we can make something work out here. Oh, he ending his turn. The fuck? Are you sure? Maybe he doesn't have things to play. Well, if you want to end your turn, then don't mind if I do. I need to find a way to pop off here. I will play the Shadow Puppetry. Is that way I can like eloquent into deathly will? I don't think so. Wait, wait. two? No, I cannot. I cannot. Then I play this because I need to. Ah, okay. But what I can do, right, is I can. Yeah, I have a I have a trick up my sleeve here. I have a trick up my sleeve here. Let's see if I get to do it. Okay, he's probably gonna use the tunic resource to play the Oasis respite. Otherwise what? He play unmovable and pitch a red. Definitely hole. I was thinking at first swing the flail, then use the then flash in the moderate type, then play the eloquent eulogy. 
Then close the combat chain, still got the sun. Okay, anyway, wait. Banish first. Yes. I swing this. Then I flash in the moderate type. So I flash in the moderate type, get one more swing. And that will be with the. No, I. There's no, there's no, the best play will not involve the eloquent eulogy. The best play just like chain those two, chain the two deathly wheels together. Like this. If I really wanted to, right, I can close the combat chain and then swing with the close the combat chain then swing with the eloquent eulogy but there'll be three there'll be three rune chunks wasted i would like to keep the rune chunks for my next turn given now that i have two reduced rune chunks in hand i just swing the flail here This is gonna make two, eh? You're gonna make me. You're gonna give me two room chance. But if he wants to keep a three plus one card hand, might be a bit dangerous. I don't think we need the tunic. Bonds of agony, yeah. We're not gonna we're not gonna like give that plus one. Do I still need my <sighs> wait wait? Yeah let's throw this in front of the bonds of agony. Then if anything we just play all the D reacts in our hand. This gets banished, so be it. Just a nick, okay. Yeah, there's a slither, slither knight. There ain't no second chance against a snake with 40 eyes, yeah. Slither, woohoo, slither knight. You're fighting for your life. 3 plus 8 is 11. Wait, what happens if it hits? This hits a hero, banish the top card of their deck. Now I can banish something else. Uh, do I play the last D react? I think no lah, let them banish some like gas which I can actually use. This is stealth so it's going to the banished. Oh, you you are really gonna let me do that? Okay, fine. Uh, huh. wait, isn't as is as clear cut as I think it is? He, he actually banished all three funeral wounds, like... 
Brother, do you know what's going to happen? <laughs> Unless he has... But okay la, he can pitch blue, blue, then de-react. Then that's it, no eloquent eulogy for me. But okay la, I think he gave up all reds in his hand. Because I can, I can do, you know, I can, I can... Fuck, wait, okay, let's go back, let's go back. Uh, oh shit, okay, uh... I, I can create the eloquence token and then I can flash out as many funeral moons as I want maybe two la, two just like one for the bounding demigon and then another one for the flail so that's a triple attack turn la. then if I still want some more rune chance I can play the second I can play a third rune chance I can play a third funeral moon then something here will get played up. or we are, we are not going to see the two records until like much much later so it's, that's that's a new matchup for you lah okay he made some questionable decisions but yeah this, this is how Vincent can go up against me you just need to have you just need to clear as many cards from your banished zone as possible. You need to set up your deck so that your deck can clear as many cards out of the banished zone as possible. That way you get like value. Your cards you block your cards block for three also can swing for four. How about that? 